Hello, everyone. Grayson Geiler with SES Services here. Every week, I like to get some news out of the financial media and go a little bit further into depth. This week, I would like to talk about the target of 2% for inflation that the Federal Reserve has. Hello? Okay, so if you watch our videos on any regular basis, you know that we talk about the Federal Reserve a lot. Well, in our defense, so much of the financial markets performance going forward is dependent on the Federal Reserve. Everyone is watching the Federal Reserve all day, every day. When the Federal Reserve has its meetings and they talk about interest rates and potentially changing interest rates, people all over the financial world are on pins and needles waiting for what the Fed says. So that, that kind of defines uh, one of the most important things that we have to watch for. Now, we're all not only do we talk about the Federal Reserve a lot, we complain about the Federal Reserve a lot. They obviously kept their emergency type policies in place after the COVID, meaning zero interest rates. And they bought $120 billion worth of assets on the open market every month after COVID. They they kept doing that way too long, clearly, obviously. Inflation has rocketed to 40-year highs. Um, so we complain about the Federal Reserve a lot, keeping emergency rates going too long, and now probably getting too aggressive on raising rates. In the Fed's defense, however, really what we're complaining about is the concept of a small group of people, people making all of these decisions. They have so much power. They have so much responsibility. The Federal Reserve... Um, the original mandate mandates, they've kind of added on to it, but the mandates of the Federal Reserve are to keep inflation under check and to keep in full, full employment or the best they can do to get to full employment. Well, they've, they've concocted an arbitrary 2% inflation rate. That's just a number they pulled out of thin air. Uh, no one can really explain why 2%. And they've been sticking to their guns for really decades, about 2%. They're still talking about 2% now. Well, when you look at the financial situation uh, in, in all of the financial markets, from stocks, bonds, commodities, what's going on in the day-to-day -day economy, not just in America, but all around the world, things are changing really, really fast. The Federal Reserve, I never saw when Congress mandated or gave a mandate to the Fed that they could aggregate a $10 trillion portfolio, which is what they did, nine and nine trillion dollar portfolio. Where where was that in, in the legislation uh, originating the Federal Reserve? It wasn't there. So they, they've taken on more and more size, power, control, responsibility. And again, the concept that a small group of people is making all these decisions is guaranteed failure. They can't make better decisions than a marketplace involving people spending their own money, making their own products from their own businesses, choosing what goods to buy, what goods to lease, all these different decisions, when they should invest, how they should invest. The marketplace of millions of decisions daily is what should be happening to make a lot of these decisions. But the Federal Reserve has taken on all this, all this control and then all this responsibility. So back to the 2% inflation um, that is their target, well, our opinion is they're going to have to change that, plain and simple. You look at since the 2008 bomb, we had negative inflation. We had deflation uh, into 2009. And inflation is chopped around since 2009, somewhere between zero and two or three percent. Pretty benign when people fear the inflation of the 70s and 80s. This looks really benign if you're old enough to remember those times. Well, then, like I say, the Federal Reserve kept stimulative policies in place way too long. And consequently, we had the rocket launch of inflation. And you've, I, of course, you've seen this in all the financial media over the last year and a half. We got towards 9% uh, on the CPI. 
and that originally the Federal Reserve, you know, in about, oh, January, December, December 21 into January 22, they were calling inflation transitory. And they were still buying $120 billion of assets every month. They still had interest rates at zero. Inflation was going to be transitory. And that did not come to pass. Now you can see, even with this rocket launch of short-term interest rates, we've got stubborn inflation hanging up in that 6% area. The Federal Reserve is going to have to admit that they do not have control over the supply side of the world's economy. Obviously, when you're talking about inflation, what are prices? Supply of goods and services is a big part of what concocts the, the, the end user's price. The inflation is not a monetary phenomenon necessarily the way, although we respect him, Milton Friedman always talked about it. It's a very non-monetary phenomenon right now. And that's what I'm describing. When you talk about the Federal Reserve controlling what inflation is, so the tools they're using is simply raising interest rates to try to squeeze some dollars out of the production side of the world economy. It's not working. They're squeezing dollars out of the production side of the world economy is going to make prices go higher. And that's arguable. But what's not arguable is some of the things going on that has caused inflation is not something the Federal Reserve has control over. The Nord Stream pipeline uh, getting blown up and, and energy prices going much higher in Europe. Fed can't control that. A lot of the, on the fiscal side, a lot of the bad decisions our government's making uh, with, with unemployment type benefits. Federal Reserve cannot control that. There are a bunch of things can, that, that are pushing inflation higher that the Federal Reserve cannot control. If they stick to their 2% mandate or their goal from their mandate of man, maintaining a, a low inflation, they're going to have to keep raising interest rates. They're going to have to keep letting their balance sheet reduce in size as they stopped buying assets, treasuries, mortgage-backed securities from the open market a few months back, well, the marketplace has to pick up. The There has to be demand. There has to be investors. There have to be buyers. Consequently, asset prices, that has pushed asset prices down if the Federal Reserve isn't buying these things. Not only are they not buying, they're letting some of the assets roll off the balance sheet when they mature. They are talking about doing some selling of the mortgage-backed securities, but I'll believe that when I see it. The point being, their tools to lower inflation aren't working. They're going to have to admit that they will have to accept higher inflation rates. I don't know what the new arbitrary number is. Maybe it's 3%, maybe it's 4%. But believe me, if, the Federal, if I'm right and the Federal Reserve comes out and says that, Asset prices will rocket higher. Stock market will rocket higher, especially on the tech side, the NASDAQ, because people will be assuming that the, the raising of short-term interest rates is all but over if the, if the Federal Reserve sets a higher inflation target. So keep that in mind. We've talked over the last couple of months, we thought the negativity of the stock market, of the economy in general, of asset prices, we, we thought that negativity was, was overdone. Uh, the markets, asset prices have bounced back pretty well. So we can't time these things. So we always say, hey, if, if your portfolio is too risky, you can't sleep at night. The last couple of months have been a good time to bounce back to lighten your portfolio. But we're never going to say, we, nobody can time these things. We're never going to say all in or all out. So I would never, hey, I, I can I can see some potentially dark storm clouds coming in the, in the economy, um, in the monetary policy and fiscal policy. But I'm not the only one that can see that. The marketplace is already pricing some of that out. And believe me, if the Federal Reserve comes out and says they're going to accept higher inflation numbers, you're going to want to already own stocks. 
So you can you can lighten up if it's if if things are um, you know keeping you from sleep at night again. Uh, but we can't time these things. We have to have some assets if we're going to participate in the stock market. And I'm not saying that everyone should or or has to, of course. But if we are going to par participate in the stock market, we have to get away from that idea of all in or all out. Sometimes you just have to have that exposure because things might happen. The Federal Reserve might come out and say something. The, the market's gone. The market rockets higher. And if you're waiting for a better buying opportunity, you're going to be left in the dust. And that happened to a lot of people after 2009. That happened to a lot of people after March of 2020. Getting out because they want to protect their assets. I get it. But when do you get back in? So get to that point. If you want stock exposure, get to that point that you're comfortable with some volatility. And it's the, these are these are assets, a part of your portfolio. It's not going to keep you awake at night if it's if it's red for extended periods of time. As time goes on, the stock market is jerry rigged to go higher. In the short term, that doesn't mean anything. And if you need to live off these assets, that's a bad strategy. So we will see what happens going forward. Obviously, everybody's sitting around waiting for the Federal Reserve. Um, some of the economic numbers are absolutely atrocious. Maybe the Fed is going to wait. They're going to continue to raise rates and wait till wait till they break something to admit that they're going to have to accept higher inflation. Or maybe they come out and say this tomorrow. We don't know. If we did know, um, this wouldn't be that much fun. But those are the basics, what we wanted to talk about this week. Hey, uh, give us a shout if you need some help personally. More than happy to sit down and talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, we always give an hour of our time uh, free of con uh, free consultation, uh, you know, free of obligation or charge to you. If you if you like the material that we're putting out, smack that like button, share it, uh, subscribe to our channel. And thank you for your time. Hope to see you back next week. Thank you.